Then a look of surprise came over Buck's face. That's it. Buck grabbed his piece of paper and pencil and sat down at the table. He scribbled a quick note, looked up at Joe, and smiled. I've got next year all wrapped up in one resolution. Joe looked at the paper, and then, with a smile, he said to Buck, You're serious. Well, howdy. Welcome to Tales from the Trail Boss's Journal. A visit to adventures in the Old West, written by the old trail boss, Pastor Jack Police, in the journal he kept during his many years on the trail. We'll hear an original, dramatized story, and then we'll gather around the campfire and listen while Pastor Jack shares some thoughts on a piece of relevant scripture and leads a discussion with the cast. Today's story is another in the Buck LaRue series, entitled Buck LaRue Resolves. The date is December 31st, 1889. The place is in the bunkhouse of the Cross B Ranch outside of Bronco, Texas. The bunkhouse floor looked like it had snowed inside. White was everywhere. In the middle, seated at the table, sat Buck LaRue. Yep, the same Buck LaRue we met in the podcast entitled All Hat and No Cattle. Buck was sitting, looking thoughtfully at the stack of note paper in front of him. In a moment, he nodded and said, Yep, that's one. He reached and took the stubby little pencil from the hat band of that big hat he wore and quickly scribbled something on the paper. Then he looked at it and shook his head. He wadded up the paper and tossed it over his shoulder, where it landed on the floor with the others he had thrown away. Nah, that's not it. He took off his big hat and scratched his head and said to himself, There must be something. Well, just at that moment, Joe Evans, the foreman of the crossbar, opened the door and came into the bunkhouse with the other hand. Joe took one look at the wadded up paper covering the floor. What in the world is all this mess? Buck looked up and seemed to see all the hands for the first time. What? Oh, my. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't paying any attention to how much paper I'd used. But I'm working on my list of resolve twos for next year. Your what? My resolve twos. You boys may remember I was a little rough when I got here. I'm going to try to improve myself to become a top hand like Joe. I'm thinking that every year I could try to do a little better than last year, so I'm working on a list of things to improve on, and I intend to hold to them. Well, what are these on the floor? Oh, those? Those are the ideas that won't work. I already do most things better than a lot of folks, so it's hard to think how I could improve. (laughs) The bunkhouse exploded with laughter. Well, if you're looking for things to improve yourself, we just might have a few suggestions. Like what? Buck stood up and faced the hands. No, don't get your back up. The boys are just trying to help. All right. Buck shrugged and sat back down. Go ahead. I'll consider your ideas. Red walked over to the table where Buck was sitting. Got your pencil handy. You just start. I'm ready. Red circled the table. He lifted his head and made sniffing noises as he circled and shook his head. Hmm, I wonder. Wonder what? Do any of those wadded up resolutions have anything to do with bathing weekly? What do you mean? Are you saying I smell bad? I ain't saying nothing, but sometimes a regular routine of bathing ain't a bad thing. I got a routine. Really? Well, I don't know what it is. I do remember last spring when you finally bathed, you found that other suit of underwear you accused everybody of stealing. Everybody's entitled to a mistake. Besides, I resolved to bathe more last year and to keep those old whiskers off my face. Oh, we couldn't tell. What? Oh, nothing. Red shook his head and went to the back of the bunk. 
Now, there is the question of chewing. Well, there's a messy habit if I ever saw one. You've always got tobacco stains on your clothes. Seems I remember you resolved to give that up last year. Yep, I did. Buck smiled and shook his head. And I'm going to. And to stop complaining anymore about the grub. You resolved all of those last year. Sure. Did I mention I also resolved to not show off in front of the new hand so much? Plus, I resolved to take better care of my stock and rise earlier to get to work on time. You resolved all of that last year, too? Well, of course. In fact, why didn't I think of it? I've still got the list from last year somewhere. Buck walked over to his bunk. He reached under his mattress and pulled out a folded-up piece of paper. I'll be darned. What? Right at the bottom here is the most important thing I resolve to do more often. Then a look of surprise came over Buck's face. That's it. Buck grabbed his piece of paper and pencil and sat down at the table. He scribbled a quick note, looked up at Joe, and smiled. I've got next year all wrapped up in one resolution. Joe looked at the paper, and then, with a smile, he said to Buck, You're serious. Yep, I mean every word. Resolve to leave all the changes I need to make to be the man God created me to be up to the Lord. Remember, his word says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who makes me who I am. Resolve to include the Lord in all the plans and resolutions I make, January 1st and every day thereafter. Now, let's join the old trail boss, Pastor Jack Blees, over at the campfire with our cast as he reflects on a piece of scripture related to today's story and the story itself, and then a conversation about resolutions and our resolve. Resolve to, you know, when I when I sat down and wrote the story, I it was right around the, that time of year when, like, when me, like everybody else, begins to do their, their resolutions for next year. As I was doing that, it happened that I was reading in the book of James, which was one of my favorite books of the Bible anyhow. And I got to James 5.12. And James 5.12 says, Above all, my brothers, do not swear, not by heaven or earth or by anything else. Let your yes be yes and your no be no, and you will not be condemned. And I got to thinking, ooh, but my yes be yes, my no be no, don't, don't swear that you're going to do anything. I think that when you think of that whole idea of resolutions, the the older we get, the harder they are to make, <laughs> the harder they are to keep. So what's the easiest thing to do? Just don't make resolutions. And that's what most people tend to do. But the idea that I think in what happens is, and I sort of just playing with it, I sat down and I thought, you know what? As a good Christian man, maybe I'll just take a look at the Ten Commandments. So I went over to Exodus 20 and I looked at the Ten Commandments and, and took a look at what they had to say. And basically just the first commandment says, thou shalt love the God. You'll have no other gods before him. You shall not have idols. You shall not steal or take the Lord's name in vain. Okay? You shall, you shall not make other idols. You shall not um, commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You know you go through eight of the ten Commandments are, thou shalt not. And when we, when we, when we, when we go ahead and, and we make our resolutions, that's what those tend to be. You know, I, 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 I won't, I'm not going to eat as much this year. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Instead of making them in a more positive, more positive sense. You know, there was a guy a long time ago, um, uh, a well-known, well-known motivational speaker in uh, sales guru named Zig Ziglar. And Zig used to talk about the fact that we need to develop SMART goals. And SMART was an acronym I'm knowing for, uh, for what he had nailed down and, and, and SMART broke down to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and, and time-bound. Okay, and so they, they, the whole idea behind our making, res, making resolutions is they need to be things that we can obtain. 
you know, psychologists say that the people, the reason that people most fail is that they set those goals too high. Uh, they may be measurable, but, but when you try to measure, when you get three or four weeks or a month into them, you're not at where you think you should be with your resolution. So they go away. The other part of it, I think, really importantly, is when we make resolutions, they're very much based on what I can do. It's all about me. I don't include God in that equation anywhere. When Buck is talking about making his resolutions in the story today, he wants to be the man that God created him to be. Well, the key part of that is what? Okay, and Buck says at the end, I resolve to let, let the Lord help me make the man that, I, that he created me to be that I need to be. When we suddenly put the Lord in the equation, when we suddenly put the Lord into our resolutions, why those ideas are, are so, so much more attainable. They don't become, I, thou shalt not. Uh, I'm not going to eat as much becomes I'm going to eat healthier. Okay, I'm going to try to, I, I'm, I'm not going to lose my temper so much this year. You know, becomes, I'm going to be more tolerant. I'm going to begin to see people more the way that God sees them. So for me, that's, that's a big part of it. When we think about our resolutions, I include God in it. So that that last one that Zig Ziglar puts in that says is time bound, that T then becomes thanks. When I achieve those resolutions, I can say, thanks, Lord, for helping me become the man or woman that I need to be. In our discussion today, we have our, uh, our regular cast that uh, we just enjoy having so much time sharing these stories with you together. Mr. Joe Joffrey. Hello, Joe. Howdy. Glad to have you out there. Jim Joff or Tim Cowan. Buck LaRue. Hello. Yes, <laughs> this is the, day. Uh, the ever popular Dorinda, Dorinda Burks over on the uh, on the board here and giving us all a smile. <laughs> and my name, of course, Jack Blaze, the old trail boss. So um, I thought we'd go ahead and what, what I wanted to do and ties right in with what I just said to you guys. Um, what did, I, I think I maybe already said this, but I'm gonna ask you, what is the number one resolution that people make every year? Anybody wanna guess? I would guess um, to diet, lose weight. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. that's absolutely right. Number two, what do you think the number two resolution is that, that people make? Joe? Uh, I'm going to say maybe physical fitness I, or, or, or quick kicking the cat. I don't know. Well, that, you, see, that's very close. <laughs> really, really, number two is I resolve to be a better person. Oh, uh, well, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And number three, there's the, what do you think the third one is? And I touched on it a little bit. And it's, it's a big one for me. Well, you'd think the way all of the gym parking lots fill up right after the first of the year, it would have to be <laughs> fitness. <laughs> but maybe that's just a better me. Yeah. I, yeah. I bet it's um, not to lose your temper, to be more patient. That's and, absolutely right. Yeah. To not, not to lose your temper. More patience and more patience. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to lose my temper. Could be translated to be, I'm going to try to get along with people better than I did before. Yeah. So those are number three. So um, I'm putting you kind of on the spot, but Joe, if you were to make a resolution for this year, what would what would be your your resolution you'd make? Number one on your list. Well, let me see. No. The Buck for Roost story isn't so far out. Is it? <laughs> What would be my uh, primary resolution? But one is I, I just I needed to hear your introductory remarks. So I think you pretty much spoke to me in those opening messages, and to frame them in a, in a more positive, looking to God. How can I be? Um, and help me to be and uh, focus more on uh, bringing him into the equation, you know, just to be a, a better husband, to be a better friend, to be a better father, to be a, a better grandfather. I think all of those are high up on my list. Uh, and measurable and attainable. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about that. So I, I hear some whirring going on over here to my right. Do yeah. 
<laughs> What's your resolution for 2024? You know, and, and I have even thought about this before now, believe it or not. But I, I would, with God's help, I would like to spend more time in the Word. I don't feel like I do that enough as it is. So beautiful. That's wonderful what I, idea. That's what I would like to do. Tim? Well, believe it or not, uh, my resolution is to be more disciplined with the resolutions I made in the past. So <laughs> I, I believe that uh, you know, a self discipline is a is a is a very important one and 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 I think that's where, you know, a lot of people let their self fall off of eating too much or whatever, but it's it's a, it's self discipline. That's even reading the Bible and, and setting mm -hmm. times up to do that. And I just I've been thinking about that for a little while is, you know, I got to be more disciplined with my my resolutions. So yeah. because they seem to not change that much from year to year. Yeah. I mean, as far as, you know, because uh, I think the focus to be, be more a better person and is more on your mind coming around this time of year and stuff. And, and you, you kind of lose the, you know, you, you got that focus, you know, work, you know, come back and forth and, there you're working all year long, and then you start thinking about things like that more this time of year. So I'm just going to be more disciplined and 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 following the things that I know I should with so, God's help. With God's help, I think that's that, right. You know, it just came to my mind, of course, and uh, uh, I think that when, when I was writing the story, one of the other pieces of scripture that came to my mind, of course, was Philippians four thirteen. Remember what that is? I can do all things through Christ, Christ Jesus who strengthens me, or the translation that Buckon did. I can do all things through Christ Jesus, who makes me what I need to be. Who makes me what I so I think that's a, I think that's a thought. Um, I guess the uh, the other thing I that I would ask about is that um, is it is it possible for us in this day and age, in this time, with the the pressures and the constraints and the things that happen to us? You know, the other thing about it is we can be very sincere about making these resolutions. But things happen right. sure. that cause us to, to not be able to do that. Life. Life, life happens. Life. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Is it really possible for us? And I'm going to talk about us now as believers. Is it possible for us to continue to, to keep the resolutions that we've made? And, and, and how, how can we do that? You know, let, let me frame it another way. Because my, my resolution is to get along better with people this next year. Okay. But January, the end of the month comes and, and I've got all the bills to pay for Christmas and that gets me upset. And February comes and the, my date for Valentine's day didn't happen. March comes and the weather is lousy. I can't get out and do the things. I can't go to the gym. Okay. April comes and it's time to pay taxes. So things continue to happen, but can I keep, that, that framework that I've had to uh, to stay stay in line with the things that I've that I've promised myself, I guess. The the only way I can um, think of to achieve that is just keep going back to God every day, going back to the foot of the cross. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just resolving to to stay in that relationship day by day. I think like Dorinda said too, you know, to to be more disciplined, to be in the Word every day, and being teachable. Yeah, yeah, and I love the way you put that, Joe. I've got to keep taking it back to the cross, back to the cross. So, because, go ahead. Yeah. So, to me, being disciplined to to uh, become that man that God wanted me to be. And, and made me to be. And, you know, a smile increases your face value to everybody. You when go. you want to be a better person, yep. you know, that first impression. 
Uh, and I think that's what uh, kind of, you know, that God wanted me to be a cheerful guy to people. And, and I just want to carry that out. Very good. Dorinda, how are you going to keep your resolutions? I guess just to be in prayer more because I want to be, I want to be able to um, be in the word more. So to do that, when, when life happens, um, I just need to be more prayerful, I think. Okay. I, I, I think that's good. You know what comes to my mind as I was doing my research on all of this? Part of what happens is, part of the reason we quit is that Satan steps in. Oh, sure. And yeah. says, I told you, I told you you couldn't lose weight. I told you you couldn't hold your temper. So that so that, that condemnation, that's the reason we give up. Satan, you're right. I can't do that. Romans 8 1 says what? There is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ. Okay? So when that condemnation part goes away, when we when we address that and we put it where it needs to be, we're headed down that right track to overcome all of that. Paul, Paul's going to tell us later in Romans again, we are what? We are more than victors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. So, Joe, you got a final thought? Well, I think the, the uh, struggle to answer that, I think, is because it places the, the, the way the question is asked, it places the burden on us, on me, to come up with an answer. And I, I really just have to keep going back to, um, I, I don't have the answer. I have to seek the answer. There you go. There I you have, go. To re, have to remain in a posture of being teachable, looking, seeking, searching. Because if I look to me for that answer, I'm going to, I'm going to come up with the wrong one. It is, it, it, and it comes back to what you're saying about, um, I'm going to start listening to, uh, the wrong internal yeah. signals. Good. Very, very good. Well, thank you, you guys. I, I'm, I'm excited about a new year. I'm excited about the chance for us to share again, uh, the thoughts, our, our, our daily lives in Christ as we do these podcasts. And so why don't we go ahead and close with prayer? Is that okay, guys? Heavenly Father, well, here we are, Lord, wrapping up a, another year, and we are so thankful for the lives that uh, that you've let us live. And Lord, we do, as we look forward to, to a new year, we look forward to a, a, a new start. Every year is a chance for a redo, as we talk about. And uh, I think it's important for us to as we, as we approach this new year, as we think about trying to become more in line with the person that you created us to be, that, that we do it through you, with you. It's because we, we do acknowledge that it's through you that we can be and become those, those persons that we want to be and you created us to be. So we just pray as we start the new year, Lord, walk with us, be with us, take our hands and, and lift us up when we stumble. And let us remember that, that it's through you, in you, that we accomplish these things. And don't listen to those other voices. So we just thank you now for the year we've had, and we thank you for the year to come. In our precious Lord and Savior's name, Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Well, we hope you've enjoyed this ride into the days of yesteryear with the old trail boss. If you enjoyed today's story and discussion, we have one favor to ask. Can you share our podcast with just one person? Someone who needs some hope or encouragement. Or maybe like you, they simply share our love of the Western heritage culture. Send them a link from your podcast player or direct them to theoldtrailboss.com. We are a listener-supported outreach of Trail Boss Ministry. At trailbossministry.com, you'll find a general store with items you can use to express or share your faith or request one of our free cowboy Bibles. It's the New Testament plus Psalms and Proverbs, sized to fit perfectly in the console of your truck, 
your purse or your saddlebag. And if you are able to financially support the podcast, you'll find donation links there too. Look in the show notes for those details. We hope you choose to ride in to 2024 following Jesus. We'll see you for more adventures soon. And so now until we see you next time, some trails are happy ones, others are blue. It's the way you ride that trail that counts. Here's a happy one for you. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds when we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails. God bless you. And may the good Lord take